Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here with Nilly, and today we're going to be going over the patch notes pretty early, actually, because most of you guys know I do look over the patch notes on like Monday or Tuesday when the patch notes or when, well, on patch day, on like update day, maintenance. But yeah, we're doing it a little bit early. I'll give you guys the reason of why we're doing that uh, tomorrow. I'm going to be making a separate video on everything. But. Yeah, let's get into it. Apparently, there are new characters from what I've heard because people have been asking me how do I feel about them, which I haven't looked at yet. All right, so we got Princess of, well, Prince of Twilight. I said Princess. So Jin Ragna. So Rock, Jin, Ragna. So Ragnarok, basically, who this is Ragnarok before he became how he is. Is what I'm guessing. Alright, so... Hold on. And Murmur. Mir Mirner. What, however the hell you pronounce her name. Jewel of the Galaxy. So she's gonna be a mage. Okay. So he's a tank. Okay, so not a DPS. Alright, Warrior Class. Physical damage. Tank has a set stun rate. First skill. Removes all buffs from one enemy. Inflicts damage. Reduces the accuracy and evasion and attack speed of all enemies that are hit. It's excluding bosses. So bosses won't be affected by any of the decreases here. And this effect cannot be removed. Dark Flame. Dark is going to be stacked up to three times. Okay, I don't know why you needed to put the whole skill name in here, but you should have just put stacked up three times. Just saying. Just saying. But second skill. Inflicts damage on one target and places a death mark status up. Oh, we know where this heads. We've, all, we've only remembered this from... Um, was it Howl? I'm pretty sure it was Howl that had something like this. Yeah, okay, hold up. Re targets marked to receive bonus damage and immediately die after five seconds later. Basically, how? So, yeah. This is pretty much exalted how. Enemies that die from the second skill cannot activate skills upon their death and cannot be revived. Oh, cannot revive themselves. So this is a huge, huge counter to Chin and any other healer that can revive themselves. That, mm, that sucks. So basically it kills all of your passives. All your death passives. Okay, this character is already just pretty much earned a spot as a really, really good PvP tank. So yeah, so far PvP, let's get back into the other skill. It's a death ignores immunity and evasion. It is not applied to bosses. Duh, duh. Don't want to be one-shotting bosses out here. Taunts all enemies excluding bosses. Increase the caster's max HP by 400%. Jesus Christ. Has reflection damage. All of all of Jin's attacks will not miss during that time. While the third skill is activated. Okay, yeah, there's a little bit of typos here missing. So yeah, I just noticed that. Skill is activated. Attack will be increased. Damage received will be decreased. Max HP will be increased by forty by four hundred percent. Wait, is that again? Anywho, physical damage will received will be reduced by 60% for the whole party. Oh wait, does he give this to the rest of the party? Oh, so yeah, the rest of the party gets increased damage reduced. Maybe? I don't know, that's actually pretty confusing now that I think about it. He receives healing for 12 seconds. 
That's actually not half bad. That could be actually pretty decent in PvE and PvP. This is not so good in um, PvE just because normally you can deal with like pretty standard like mobs pretty easily. Easily unless you build them wrong and are having quite a bit of trouble. But I can see this and this being good for PvE. Alright, first passive. Twilight Energy increases by 4. So he has like a gauge system that he has to keep up with. With every normal attack, stacks up to 100 max. When Twilight Energy is full, it can be used to remove all buffs on all enemies. And remove an enemy formation. So straight up PvP tank. This skill activated by Twilight Energy ignores immunity, cannot be evaded, cannot be removed. Rock's party defense is increased by 27%. Additionally increases Ragna's party defense per level per enhancement. Alright, pretty, pretty nice. Makes your team pretty tanky. Removes all debuffs for party members, gains a shield without any time limit upon death. The shield cannot be removed. Increases the party. Oh, increases shielded party members' attack speed by 100%. Oh, damn. That's actually not too bad. Oh, well, hold up. Decreases damage received from all party members. Oh, well, by all party members by 20%. Physical damage received by 40% if it is in arena. So yeah, that basically says, hey, I'm an arena tank. Get me if you want to be good at arena. So both um, Helsing and this character are going to be like really good together. But let's keep going. Well, Helsing is a DPS, so yeah, not another tank, by the way. For warriors. Alright, max enhancement. Final energy is increased by 12 per attack. Okay. It's gonna make that a lot better in PvP just because the more you're removing our buffs and destroying your formation, the less they the less damage they're gonna be having. And that's just gonna be screwing them so much. Twilight will wait, is this a different skill? Okay, no, it's a it's the first passive. The first passive which is used when Twilight Energy is full has the following effects added. Decreases max HP by 50%. De decreases the heal amount by 50%. Decreases defense by 50%. Excluding bosses. Holy crap. Yeah, this guy is going to be countering the crap out of all the healers in the game at max. What the hell? They will be stunned for two seconds, and yeah, minor two seconds, and they, they don't really last too long. These effects cannot be removed. Also, when Twilight Energy is full on Ragnarok, we'll gain invisibility for seven seconds. And yeah, pretty nice. All attacks will miss. The effect cannot be removed. Ragnarok will gain heal over time. And max HP will increase. Wait, isn't this the same skill as this? No, it's the it's the third skill. Why is the third skill being placed there? Let's see if there's any difference. But basically it says max HP will increase by 400%. Damage decreased by 50%. Physical damage received by is decreased by 60%. All effects added to Prince of Twilight will be ignored. Well, well, will ignore immunity and evasion. Huh? Hold up. Oh, okay, so it gives damage reduction for this, and that's it. That's what they're going for. That that confused the hell out of me. Why don't you just say this was added to the third skill? 
All right. Next, she's mage, DPS, magic, decreases evasion, first skill removes all buffs on one enemy, inflicts damage, also sealing movement for enemies except bosses, increases range damage against boss enemies, okay, increases receive damage of yeah, increases receive damage of boss types. Inflicts Rose of the Galaxy mark to enemies near the target by the target by the first skill. So yeah, let's see if I can word that better to help you guys understand because that that is actually word weirdly. Inflicts a Rose of the Galaxy mark to enemies near the target that it was hit by the first skill. So it does hit one person, so anybody next to that one target is inflicted with this. If you guys get what it's going for. I, I, I get the gist of it, where it's trying to go. Are inflicted by evasion and are not immune. Alright, you know what, let's get to the second skill. That, that one's worded weirdly for me in my tiny brain. <laughs> Inflict damage to all enemies, increases her AoE damage, additional boss damage, accuracy, and reduces the damage taken by 20%. Sacks up there three times. Additionally, inflicts constant damage over time that have the galaxy mark with two stacks max. To enemies that are not boss types, Seal normal attacks and block them from receiving buffs. Decreases defense by 10%. Increases attack received for bosses. This effect can be stacked up to two times. Effect that is applied through Galaxy Mark ignores immunity and cannot be removed or evaded. Alright. Next skill, the third one. Increases magic attack, fixed damage, additional boss damage for all party members. The third skill can only stack up to two times. Okay, the first passive. Increases AoE for all party members. Additional increase for, a for the AoE is increased by the number of enhancements. Also increases her boss damage. When non-boss monsters that have Galaxy Mark have their normal sealed with with a second skill, they are also blocked from using skills that that are triggered by their death or skill that revive them. So basically, another counter to um, healers. Great. So another PVP character. Or somewhat decent PvP mage, let's say that. Increases her intelligence, inflicts damage to one boss. Well, additional boss damage to one enemy. Alright, so she can be good in PvE too. Every attack. Okay, so she's made for one boss golem. Increases the magic damage of all party members and when she attacks sets up two times so she's gonna be good with a uh, first crown gonna be perfectly teamed up with perf with uh, first crown increases enemy range damage received decreases defense p penetration and fixed damage additionally when attacking with the third passive skill inflicts Damage over time for one enemy. This next up to two times cannot be removed. At this at this time, her magic attacks are increased. Her active skills are increased. Additional boss damage is increased. And her attack is increased. Stacks up to three times. That was her max skill. Alright. Pretty decent. 
<laughs> Wait, is this an actual selector? So after the Christmas, so after Christmas, you can get these two, or one of these two. Okay, so they hand them out for free. Um, if anything, I would choose um, this guy just to team him up with my um, Helsing. So yeah, also you guys can see that my team is <laughs> pretty much come together. I have um, Helsing here just because I wanted her for PvP. Just to help out a little bit more in my rankings. It has actually been pretty worth having her around. Um, so, let, let's compare the two. Blizz versus um, Jin. Jin is more PvP. Blizz is more... PvE for sure. He just helps so much with like boosting damage. I mean, you can use him in pretty much PvP too, to sort of shields. But he's more of an all-around tank, and he's just gonna be around for a long while until the next characters come. Mages now, uh, mage versus mage. I feel like first crown is probably better for PvE for sure. And he could be really good in PvP as well. From what I've seen, he's the man's insane. But he mostly shines in PvE. But there will definitely be a lot of better mages that come into the game. But if you're wanting to focus on a full magic team, just get both First Crown and uh, Mariner. Mariner. Mariner? Manor? Whichever one. <laughs> But if you're actually looking for a good tank for PvE, I would definitely recommend Blizz. And if you need a good tank for PvP, it will probably be Jin to mostly go for, hands down. So that's why I'm going to be making him anyway. The only reason I say he's good for pretty much a team, and I do mean like magic or physical, is just because his buffs aren't aimed just for magic teams so right here this is the only skill that I believe is aimed towards magic but anyway you don't need your buffer to be um, doing damage anyway you just need it for the buffs and the number one skill that I'm mostly worried about is his third skill his third skill gives a shield to everyone increases skill damage and boss damage evasion damage like, it's just like a whole bunch of increases for your whole party. At least I think it's for your whole party. I mean, just right here it just says shield to <laughs> party members. But I'm not sure if this goes to everybody else or just stays on him. If anybody who has used um, Blizz could actually help me out with that. Because I'm pretty sure it goes to the whole party. But that evasion by 25% makes me think I don't think this goes to the whole party just because just you evading like so much damage is kind of insane for sure also he does have a few good passives as well that aims towards everybody else too where is it yeah here it is increases attack to all party members decreases damage and also really good for Siege and Guild Loot. Which also I might want to add, Guild Loot is actually a lot easier with these characters. I feel like they gave us the Exalted um, Guild Loot for a while. That's all I have to say. That's exactly what it felt like. They gave us the Exalted Guild Loot before the Exalted were even here. But now that we have these characters, it's like so much easier. Like you can probably finish it within like a day again. And I've actually gotten to the point where I could just 
pretty much solo most of it within like probably a day. So most of our guild members, you guys gonna attack the guild loot again. If you guys thought it was like too strong, it is actually a lot easier now. So feel free to go back in. Um, as for story, I've been slowly progressing through it, so I haven't been able to make any like story episodes, but yeah, we'll definitely get through it. Just at the moment, uh, yeah, I'm on the second chapter. I mean, the only reason it's taking forever is just because I gotta go back through the story again. <laughs> yeah, they're forcing me to go through the story. I, I seriously wish they would have the skip button by now, but uh, on the bright side. Will you get an arc transcendent character just for absorbing? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what everybody mostly gonna use it for. But it's just for absorbing, and you get a crap ton of um, transcendent essence as you go up. Yeah, all the way up towards that point. So yeah, each area gives you like a pretty decent amount of um, essence. Also. This whole um, offhand mode has been helpful so much. Like I can actually, I'm actually really close to making just one uh, exalted character max. I, I don't think it's gonna be either Jin or Murner, but just because um, not a huge fan of them. I might save off into the next batch they release, but I'm pretty sure those two are in a. Hold up. Pretty sure they're all, they're alone, right? Because in the folio, I think they have their own separate section. So there's just going to be another section with these two in it. Then the rest of the characters is going to come into another section. But so far, these five have been like really, really good. I was thinking about getting first crown, but then I was just like, nah. I'll probably get him down the road, but... But these yeah, guys who are trying to finish like this, trying to finish like the achievement and stuff, I guess. I guess that'll be really good for you, just because masteries. Uh, where is it? Yeah, here it is. Trying to get all of them and get them to max, I, I guess. But this is the only exalted item. All you need is just to get get them all. So yeah, with that said guys, I'm going to let you all go, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And to them, peace out. That's pretty much all my personal opinions. Good night. Swear it's going to get better real soon. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're going to make it soon. Just keep pushing through. You're what you got to lose. to lose.